Good morning, students. In today's class, we shall resume with the chapter Poets and Pancakes. So far in the chapter, we learn about the author's connection with the Gemini Studio. The author highlights the idea of national integration. In support of his statement, he says that Gemini Studio reflected national integrity and sovereignty much before there has been shows that were broadcasted on Doordarshan and All India Radio. The author in this chapter also speaks about how the makeup department was run by the members of the Gemini studio. Now if you note the manner in which pancake was used and the way the office boy worked, worked is amusing and ironical. As the main purpose of applying pancake was to look pretty and fair, but the actresses rather looked more ugly and monstrous as they applied excessive pancakes on their face. The office boy who worked in the studio joined the studio with the hope to become a star, but unfortunately, his luck turned him down and he became an office boy. Now, Let's study further in the chapter. The author continues the explanation where he speaks about himself, the way he spent his days at the studio. He says that in those days I worked in a cubicle, two whole sides of which were French windows. I didn't know at the at that time, they were called French windows. So, the author worked in a place where on the two sides of the wall were French windows. French windows are large sized windows that gives a better view of the outside world. Seeing me sitting at my desk, tearing up newspapers day in and day out, most people thought I was doing next to nothing. It is likely that the boss thought likewise too. As the author main duty in the studio was to cut out and assemble newspaper clippings for the whole day, to this everyone in the studio considered that his job was worthless and insignificant. And uh, the, wor the worst aspect was even his boss also had the same perception. So anyone who felt I should be given some occupation would barge into my cubicle and deliver an extended lecture. So every member had this impression in, his, in their mind that the author did nothing and his job was insignificant as he was always found sitting in his cubicle. Thus whenever anyone felt like passing time or to do gossip, they would simply enter his cubicle and indulge in idle talk. The boy in the makeup department had decided I should be enlightened on how great literary talent was being allowed to go waste in a department fit only for barbers and perverts. So the boy actually here refers to the office boy which we have, which we have already discussed who worked in the makeup department. So he would always come to the author to vent out his emotions and would share his riff how his talent was going waste and that no one recognized his skills. And he was actually more frustrated with the fact that the dream of becoming a star in the film when he joined the studio was now all shattered. Because unfortunately his luck did not favor him and he remained an office boy. According to this office boy, the department was fit only for barbers and perverts. Perverts actually means for those who are worthless and, uh, and are unexperienced. So he thought that this place was not, this makeup department was not the right place for him to work. So, uh, and people... Talented people like him did not need to work here or deserve something more better. Soon, I was praying for crowd shooting all the time. Nothing 
shot of it could save me from his epics so the author was bored with the continu with the continuous gossip of the office boy so whenever he came to his cubicle the author adding a humor at this instant says that he would pray for the trout shooting so that he can get rid of his company and his long idle gossip here the word epics in the line means long talk or narration in all instances of frustration you will always find the anger directed towards a single person openly and covertly and this man of the makeup department was convinced that all his woes ignominy and neglect the quota due to the quota manglam subo now note here that at this situation the author the narrator mentions about another important and significant character in the gemini studio named quota manglam subo so the author further explains that it's a human nature it's a human tendency that a person is likely to build his frustration or the reason behind his aggression is his enemy and so was with this office boy too because uh, the cause of all his woes and ignominy ignominy means embarrassment was was all due to this character named kotha mangalam subo subo was the number 2 at gemini studios he couldn't have had more encouraging openings in film than our grown up makeup boy had so subo was the second most important person in the gemini studio the narrator says that kotha mangalam subo had a more encouraging opening or had a better career which means he was give, uh, given a uh, better opportunities and advantage in the movies when he joined the studio not only this he became more popular and successful in comparison to this office boy who was full of talent and competence so this fact irritated this office boy even more further the narrator says on the contrary he must have had to face more uncertain and difficult times for when he began his career there were no formally established film producing companies or studios so uh, the narrator in his affirmation says that it might not have been very easy for kota mangalam subu to earn his name and fame in the industry as when he began his career there were no established film producing companies or studio that means in other words he is trying to say that he even had to do a lot of struggle even in the matter of education especially formal education subu couldn't have had an appreciable lead over our boy the narrator says that even in terms of education especially formal education subu was not well versed unlike this office boy the narrator further adds and says that subu was lucky and he got as he got appraisal only because he was a brahmin and belonged to the upper caste due to which he was easily promoted in his career the narrator further adds that he was always looked cheerful even after knowing the fact that that his films went flop in a comfortable scene in a comfortable situation and had connections with every person in the studio he always had work for somebody he could never do things on his own but his sense of loyalty made him identify himself with his principal completely and turn his entire creativity to his principal's advantage he was tailor made for films the narrator says that subu was a resourceful person and always helped others but could not do things alone he was known for loyalty his principal and creativity of doing any work so everyone praised and considered that he was a perfect fit in this profession the narrator in praising subu says that whenever he was given a command or handed over with any task he would do it with 
utmost sincerity and interest. The rat fights the tigress underwater and kills her, but takes pity on the cubs and tends them lovingly. I don't know how to do the scene. The producer would say and Subhu would come out with four ways of the rat pouring affection on the victim's offspring. The particular conversation is related to a fight scene that was meant to be shot underwater. The rat kills the tigress and later pours her affection on the cubs. But the producer finds difficulty in taking this particular shot. At this situation, Subhu would come up with, a multi with multiple suggestions to take the shot. So this reflects that Subhu was quite resourceful and immediately he would come up with a lot of ideas whenever such problem arose. Good, but I am not sure it is effective enough, the producer would say and in a minute Subhu would come out with 14 more alternatives. So sometimes it used to happen that the producer did not like his ideas claiming that they may not be very effective. In such case, Subhu would come up with other more or thousand ideas. So he was quite skilled and had such qualities and he knew the intricacies of how a complex scene had to be shot. Filmmaking must have been and was so easy with a man like Subhu around and if ever there was a man who gave direction and definition to Gemini Studios during its golden years it was Subhu. So as already mentioned that in those days films were made with minimum resources available so the narrator mentions that Subhu was immensely creative and had such brilliant ideas to short films. So everyone was uh, around him asking for some or the other help. He gave directions and a new vision to the Gemini studio. Subhu had a separate identity as a poet and though he was certainly capable of more complex and higher forms, he deliberately chose to address his poetry to the masses. Subhu had a, another identity and that he was a poet too. Although having made his career in the film production, <coughs> film production company, the poet inside him was still alive. He deliberately chose to write poetry dedicated and dedicated his poetry to the masses. His success in films overshadowed and dropped his literary achievements or so his critics felt. So no doubt uh, Subhu was a wonderful actor and had a good hand at poetry as well but the critics considered they felt that the glamour and the success of his films had overshadowed his literary achievement. That means his literary talent was not much popularized and remained in oblivion. So he composed several truly original story poems in folk refrain and diction and also wrote a sprawling novel Pilana Mohan Mohanambal uh, with dozens of very deftly etched characters. So Ashoka Mitran talks about Subhu's literary work. Kota Mangalam Subhu wrote a novel Pilana Mohanambal that was full fleshed with the characters like the Hindu epics. Full fleshed is actually, you know, where uh, are the works where you have uh, heavy, where you have heavy dialogues and lo uh, you have characters, you know, that are larger than life. So um, he went on to compose poems using local tone and composed in refrain. Refrain in literature refers to the poetic device that is used in poems where uh, the particular line or stanza is repeated. Uh, it is very similar to the repetition that we use in poetry. So he was quite successfully, he quite successfully recreated the mood and the manner of the Devdasis of the early 20th century. 
The author here gives a historical reference that in the early 1940s and 50s, Devdasi system was in practice in India and it was a religious practice whereby parents married a daughter to a deity or a temple. However, later this system was abolished. So the narrator says that Subhu had such creative hand, he was so creative at writing that he would minutely capture the every mood and manner of the Devdasi of the early 20th century. He was an amazing actor. He never aspired to the lead roles, but whatever subsidiary role he played in any of the films, he performed better than the supposed main players. <clears throat> So the narrator appreciates Subhu's <coughs> acting skills, says that he was a brilliant actor and had no ill intention or used his fame to snatch the role of the other actors. He was never into the race, though others saw him as a competitor. He was contented with every role that was offered to him. This shows that despite of having numerous talents, he was he remained grounded and liked to remain in the low profile. Even in the subsidiary roles, he performed better than those main lead actors in the film. He could beat anyone in terms of acting skills. He had a genuine love for anyone he came across and his house was a permanent residence for dozens of near and far relations and acquaintances. One of the best aspects about Subo's behavior was that he was unbiased and treated everyone with great affection and tender. He was an excellent host and his residence was always occupied with visitor. That means he always had some visitors um, one or the other time. He welcomed everyone to his house and needless to say that he loved people also loved his company. It seemed against Subhu's nature to be even conscious that he was feeding and supporting so many of them, such a charitable and improvident man, and yet he had enemies. So, uh, on the whole, we can conclude that all these acts are enough to prove that Subhu was a charitable and improvident man. No one could ever think that he could have any differences with any person or had any enmity. Was it because he seemed to he seemed so close and intimate with the boss, or was it his general demeanor that resembled a sacrifice, or his readiness to say nice things about everything? In any case, he was there was this man in the makeup department who wished to who wished the direst things for Subo. So the narrator here speculates about the possible conditions or the reasons why people were jealous of, uh, of him or had enmity towards him. It may be because he was close to his boss compared to the other person or other people at the studio. Possibly uh, this created a hostile feeling in the other people. Or was it because he was frank and praised everyone and impressed everyone at the studio? So whatever be the reasons, there was one person in the makeup department who was jealous of his appearance and wanted him to look down before everyone. And as for the hints, we can make out that this person was no one but the office boy at the Gemini studio. You always saw Subu. You saw Subhu always with the boss, but in the attendance roles, he was grouped under a department called the story department, comprising a lawyer and an assembly of writers and poets. So though Subhu was close to his boss, but he worked in the department called the story department, where he worked with lawyer and other creative people and with the group of writers and poets. Even in the attendance register, his name was mentioned under the story department. On further reading, we find that Ashoka Mitran mentions about the legal advisor who tactfully handled his matter. 
he was opposite of what his profession meant to be. He knew how to turn the situation in his favor. The narrator mentions about one such incident. He says that once an extremely talented actress who was also extremely temperamental once blew over on the sets. While everyone stood stunned, the lawyer quietly switched on the recording equipment. So in day-to-day -day life, we hear about, we hear many stories of tantrums of the stars and the artists on the set, even for trivial matters or to earn name and publicity. So once during the shooting on the set, an extremely talented actress who was quite moody or had mood swings blew over on the set unnecessarily. Blew over means uh, to involve into arguments. So everyone was stunned with her attitude and did not knew how to handle the situation. To this, the lawyer who stood there watching the entire scene quickly switched on the recording equipment. When the actress paused for breath, the lawyer said to her, one minute please, and played back the recording. There was nothing indiscriminating or unmentionably foul about the actress's standard against the producer, but when she heard her own when she heard her voice again through the sound equipment, she was struck down. So when the actress's tempo was normal, the lawyer played back the recording. She was quite shocked and embarrassed to hear her own voice through the recording. Though there was nothing foul in the recording or there was nothing any wrong that she spoke about the producer in her speech. So this was only to teach her a lesson. Generally actors and actresses have a lot of mood swings and sometimes it becomes a trouble for everyone on the set. Further we read, a girl from the countryside, she hadn't gone through all the stages of worldly experience that generally precede a position of importance and sophistication that she had found herself catapulted into. She never quite recovered from the terror she felt that day. The narrator says that this actress belonged to the countryside. Countryside means someone who comes from the local or village side. So she was a newcomer and had recently stepped into the world of film industry. She was completely unaware of the sophisticated lifestyle. It seems that she was catapulted or that means uh, catapulted means by force. So she was forced to join the industry. So when the legal advisor turned on the recording, she was shocked and never came out of this embarrassment and terror and that she had to face the particular day. That was the end of a brief and brilliant acting career the legal advisor, who was also a member of the story department, had unwittingly brought about that sad end. So uh, the narrator says that this incident led to the end of the actress's career, though short but significant because she was a brilliant actress, no doubt. That means uh, uh, since that incident happened, she said goodbye to the industry and unknowingly uh, the legal advisor was, became responsible for this to bring her career to the sad end.